hello guys you're welcome to the channel i am lillian if you are meeting me for the first time and in this video i'll be showing you guys how i came about the dress you saw on the thumbnail please keep on watching if this sounds like something you want to learn about this short ball dress is very beautiful and comfortable for kids it's comprised of um, a zipper at the back it has a zipper at the back and some buttons at the front overlap though you can use a pressing button you can decorate it with any buttons you prefer so this is the zip the child can easily go in and out of the dress despite having a collar so this is what we'll be learning about just keep on watching make sure you watch to the end another interesting thing about this dress is that the puffy sleeve is just made from a basic sleeve so let's go right into the video without much talking The materials I use for this dress are a satin fabric which will be used as the main fabric, a lining and also a hard net or can can and a zipper. If you do not want to use a zipper, you can omit the zipper. So the first thing we have to do is to draft out a basic bodice. We are starting with the back panel first and on the starting line I have a line. Also towards me I have a zipper allowance because I'll be using a zipper. So I will go ahead and mark out the length of the dress. I'm using 9 inch, inches as the length of the dress. And I added 1 inch um, joining allowance to the skirt part. So I'm marking out 10 inches right now. And after that, I'll roll it into a straight line. So we'll proceed to marking out half of the shoulder measurement, which is 4 inches, plus half an inch seam allowance. The shoulder is 8. Half of it is 4 plus half an inch. So on the shoulder edge right there, I came down by half an inch for the shoulder slope. So for the neck width and the neck depth, I'm taking 2 inches for the neck width and um, half an inch for the neck depth. So from the neck width of 2 inches, I'm joining it straight to the shoulder slope and also connecting the neckline for the back. I'm using half an inch for the back neckline, the neck depth. So on that half an inch shoulder slope I came down from, I'm also coming down by 4 inches, which is half of the round arm hold, and I'm ruling it into a straight line. This line now will now form my chest line. So having gotten the chest line, I will label it chest line, waistline, and that there is my shoulder. So on the um, chest line, I am taking exactly my shoulder measurement so as to get a straight line. Four and a half is what I mark on the chest line. So I connected it into a straight line. And on the connection I made, I am dividing it by two, and that is two inches. Then I would now be taking my body measurement. The chest, chest measurement I'm working with, the chest circumference is 22 inches. Quarter of it is 5.5 inches. And I added one and a half inch seam allowance for, for joining. The waist measurement and the chest measurement are the same thing. So I'm marking exactly what I marked on the chest line on the waist as well. I'm using 22 inches for both. So I'll be connecting the arm hook off from the 5.5 inches I made earlier on the chest line to the middle of the arm hole. And the back part is ready. The only remaining thing we have to add is the seam allowance at the shoulder part for joining. So remember to do this because if you do not do while joining it to the front, it might, it might prove it, uh, a problem. So I'm using a a red marker so as to highlight it so i'll go ahead and cut that out and then we'll move straight to the front pattern this is just a basic bodice so this is what i have for the back and for the front i have um four inches 
uh, sorry five inches upwards and five inches on the side then i have a boss in the middle on that boss that's where i'm going to um draft my basic bodies inside the boss so i'm just going to repeat exactly what i did on the back inside that front inside the boss so i took my half of my shoulder measurement which is four inches plus half an inch and i came down by half an inch for the shoulder slope then for the neckline i'm using two inches by two inches for the back we use two inches by half an inch but for the front i am using two inches by two inches for the neckline so i'll connect it right there just exactly what we drafted on the back part is what we are drafting inside this board the only difference is that the neck depth here will be two inches so i just came came down by four inches for half of the armhole and i'm trying to get a straight line which will form my chest line so that now is my chest line and i'll connect it straight to my shoulder point then i'll get the midpoint of that line which is two inches on this front part i'm coming in by half an inch on the back part i did not come in by half an inch but on this part i'm coming in by half an inch so i'm now taking my body measurement which is 5.5 .5 inches plus one and a half inch seam allowance same thing now is what i'm going to take on the waistline so i'll connect it right there and move on to the other part you see what i'm doing the lines the dots i'm connecting and i'll join that to the tip of the shoulder so the the front part is ready as well so we have to work on the sh uh, shawl and on the collar so the first thing we have to do is to mark two inches extension towards the center front two inches that will be for our overlap you know the dress will overlap each other and we'll connect it straight to the shoulder point to the shoulder point we just drafted a basic body so it doesn't confuse us but that neckline is really not important so we've connected that two inches to the shoulder point and that is our overlap the next thing we have to do is to bring the back part and measure the neckline minus the seam allowance of 0 0.5 inches so what i have right there is 2.25 on that 2.25 i will i'll mark the 2.25 on the straight line i'm connecting i'm extending this line and I'll mark the 2.25 I measured from the back panel on this. So this will be my neckline. You have to measure the back so it rhymes when you are joining it. If you do not measure it, some, uh, it, some part might be bigger than others. So what you have to do now is to mark out the width of the collar. You can use 3 inches, you can use 4 inches. If you are using 3 inches, when it's on food, it's 1.5 inches. If it is 4 inches, it is 2 inches. So you are marking it in an angle 90 manner. You are not marking it straight. Just take it an angle 90. I marked 3 inches. You can use 4 inches as well. When it's on food, it will be 2 inches. So mine was 1.5 inches when it was on food. So on that end part, you can choose to leave it straight like that or even extend it out more. But me, I'm just doing a curved, a curved end and I'll connect it to the three inches um, shawl I marked. Yes, the collar I marked, the three inches. So this is now our shawl and our pattern is ready. The only thing we have to do is just to add seam allowance around the shawl, the shoulder and the collar. So I'll be using a red marker as well for clarity. So it doesn't confuse you on which part I added seam allowance. So on all the red parts are my seam allowance. Remember I've added seam allowance for the side. So there's no need adding any other seam allowance on the side. So from the center front, the initial place we drafted that our bodies from, I am marking now 3 inches. 3 inches, I'll connect it to a straight line. From that line, we took our measurement from, not from the shoulder, so from the line i'm marking at three inches i connected it into a straight line 
so this will guide us why we are cut, why we'll be cutting our lining this is just a guide for us to cut our lining because we'll be cutting that open to get the front part of the lining so now i'll go ahead and cut that out and our front and back pattern will be ready so this is what my front will look like and my back i will use this tool and cut out my fabric the back i'll cut it out on the fabric for the lining and for the satin but for the um front i only cut the front for the fabric exactly the way it was when we drafted it then for the lining i'll have to fold it and slit it open just keep watching you'll see what i meant by that so i've cut it out now the satin i cut out the front the two parts you know it will be two so the back as well this is complete the back and the front remember to notch your seam allowance so for the lining itself i cut out exactly the same thing for the lining for the back exactly the same thing i cut out for the front for the back then for the front i had opened the line i i, I made earlier and on the longer part i use it to cut out the satin fabric on the smaller part i cut out the lining you know because this will be on fold the the, the the fabric will be the one facing outside so we we'll have to cut uh, even if you are using another color of fabric this is where you you will cut it out with the longer one assuming you are to use black for black to come out on the shore or on the collar this is where you will use or any other color you want so this is what the lining will look like half of it will be the satin half of it will be the lining so we'll go ahead since we added half an inch seam allowance we'll go ahead and join the half an inch seam allowance and it will go back to the normal way it was supposed to be so this is now me i've added them um, joined them and i ironed them open it has now gone back to the normal thing we drafted earlier this is our lining and our fabric is is exactly the way it's it, the lining is so we'll place it on each other and go ahead and join with half an inch seam allowance that we added while drafting right now i've joined the front part only on i saw only on the shawl part from the top to the end part so i'll open it up like so and join it i'll join that is the color i'll join it open the seam the two and join it with half an inch seam allowance if you are using 0 0.25 seam allowance make sure that is what you added while drafting but i'm using 0 0.5 so i will join it i've gone ahead to join the shoulder so joining the shoulder on the parts you will look at if you look at that place very well you will notice that my neckline is the one horizontal being no horizontal then the vertical one is my shoulder i'll bring the back part and stitch two inches to three inches down so as to join it to the um shoulder part of that the front part i will open it up look carefully you will see what i'm doing i'll match the center to each other the center of the back since i've joined it by two inches i close this zipper allowance i'll join it so i'll pin it carefully you have to be careful because this place is a bit tricky if you do not do it where well, the neck area might not come out very well so you have to join the neck to each other And the shoulder to each other just match the neck to the neck and the shoulder to the shoulder so right there is the neck region i'm joining it the neck then the the extension that is vertical is the 
shoulder point i've gone ahead to join it remember i'm just working with only the um fabric the front and the back so i've joined it and i made a notch you have to make a notch where that shoulder started from you know we call this thing as cut together shawl and then um, collar we didn't cut it separate so you have to make a notch from that notch you will know that your shoulder stopped here and your neckline uh, is the other one so that is my shoulder my neckline and another shoulder so i'll bring in my fabric my lining sorry my lining to cover it up i'll sew it exactly the way i sew the main fabric so this is the lining for the back i'll pin it exactly the way i pin the back fabric and i'll sew it and a notch as well So guys, I finished sewing the neck region. See how neat it is. You have to take your time. Just cool down and sew it. Pin it if necessary. In fact, you need to pin it so that you don't make any mistake or sewing and losing. I've joined them and I've ironed them open. I've ironed it properly and I've ironed the shawl as well. The overlap is there. If you can, if you can see very well, you can. Take it to the right or to the left, anywhere you want it. So I will go ahead and open up the lining and match right side facing each other. And I will stitch it with the allowance I left while drafting. Then on the fabric, I will match them as well and, and, and stitch it down with the one and a half inch seam allowance I left. So I will do, do that to the other part as well, to the right and to the left. So I've, I will stitch it with the allowance and also when I finish stitching them, I will, I will position the overlap the way I want them to be, left or right, anywhere you choose and I will stitch it, I will make a stitch. So I want the only opening I will be having to be at the back so that I will be able to fix my zipper. So I've stitched that down and I've joined the sides, see the inside is very neat i concealed it the inside is very neat then the only opening i had i had was at the back so now i'll take the measurement of that waistline i'll take my measurement that measurement is what i'll be using to cut out my skirt part So after measuring around, what I got was 24 points. So I just made it 25. So I will be folding a half lay, half circle. I, I folded the fabric into two equal parts before, before folding it into a triangular part. So just look at what I'm doing. I'm folding into a triangular part. And I'll pin it so it doesn't shift. The measurement I, I measured earlier, the round uh, waist measurement, including the zipper for the both side, is um, 25 inches. I will times that, but you can times it by 2 or by 1.5 or even by 3, depending on how loud you want the dress to be. And when you times, times it by the number you want it to be, you divide it by 3.14. And I got mine as 11.5 inches. That's what I'm marking out. Uh, that's what I marked out at the waist region and also I'm taking the length of the dress which is 15 inches because the full length of the dress is 22 inches and I had already worked with 9 inches for the upper part I'm left with 15 inch, uh, 13 inches then I will now be adding 2 inches in my allowance plus the 13 inches I will be left with 15 inches so that's what I'm cutting out 15 inches is what I just cut out and I, opening it you see that the waist is more than what we have on the uh, upper part I'll go ahead and pleat it I'll, I'll cut out lining for the skirt part as well but this will be in a straight form you can choose you can cut it out in a triangular form like I did so on the bodies of the um, upper part. I've gone ahead to join that skirt part that I just cut out. I've joined it. 
and I'll go ahead and sew it on on my sewing machine. Look at how beautiful the cloth is turning out already. Once I sew the inner part, I'll still go ahead and sew the lining on it. As for the sleeve, I just had a basic sleeve here. A basic sleeve is what I am using. And I'm measuring the side that will be on the shoulder, the armhole area, is what I'm measuring. And I had 13 inches. You can times it by 2 or 3. I also measure the length of the dress of the sleeve which is six inches so what i have is just a rectangular um cutting here i have 20 inches by 10 inches that's what i will be working with and i made it two for each uh, one for each sleeve one rectangle and one sleeve for one hand the other for the other hand so i'll match the midpoint i'll try to get the center of this rectangle and i'll match it to the center of the sleeve on the down part right side facing each other and i'll try as possible as i can to pleat the whole of that 20 inches into the the end of the sleeve that is the hem of the sleeve the round sleeve so i'm pleating the 20 inches we have on this sleeve just have to take your time pin it down and pleat so once i'm once i'm done pleating i will sew on it and i will top stitch it towards towards the um the sleeve itself not the rectangle i'll sew on it and top stitch towards the sleeve and I'll flip it over. Once I flip it over like that, you know the wrong side of the rectangle will now be facing the right side of the sleeve. And I'll go ahead as well and pleat the side. You know we had 6 inches times 2. Okay, we had 10 inches on the vertical side. And it will be more than that of the basic sleeve. So I'm pleating it towards um, or the basic sleeve. You pleat it, make sure the whole of this 10 inches enters that small area. So you go ahead and sew that down as well. Then the, the only remaining part now will be the upper part, which I will still go ahead and pleat. I'll match the midpoint together and I'll pleat them. So just take your time and pleat. You pleat and you sew. I finished pleating and I'll sew. So I'll do this for the second sleeve. This is what the inside will look like after we finish doing that. I've done it for this sleeve, and this is what it looks like. So this side now will be the one that will be I will attach to the armhole. I will go ahead and join it with one inch seam allowance i left while i was drafting it and i'll join that to the armhole side so for the lining for of the skirt part i just cut out a long strip of uh, um, lining yeah, the measurement i used was my waist measurement times 1.5 and i had can can or hard nets i just cut out three strips of hard net and i pleated it just to give it a little bit of fullness and i will go ahead and gather it at the waist area or pleat it at the waist area then join it to the skirt part after pleating it the wrong side of that um can can will be facing the wrong side of the dress so that the that smooth side will be touching the baby so i'll go ahead and join it to the skirt part so right now i've joined the sleeves i've joined the can can the skirt parts i also attached buttons just for decorative purposes you can attach i'll go ahead and attach a pressing button to hold that place down
you can easily open and close it then i will hem the down part and also i attach the zipper at the back so i attach an invisible zipper at the back the inside is neat so you can see it has a, a, a collar and it has a zipper so this is awesome this is what the inside looks like the inside is very neat you see the hard net is not touching the baby you have to conceal it in a way that it will not be touching the baby the only rough edges we have there is on the sleeve which i will be searching with a, a, an overlocker so after that i will give this dress a good ironing and our clothes is ready thank you for watching if you watch up to this point please endeavor to like and share comments just encourage me thank